Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew and welcome to Taito Ecology. This is a charming little game that was just released on the Steam store that focuses on building your own unique biomes using different creatures and plants and all sorts of things. Um, the main goal is to strike a balance in your biome that allows it to become self-sufficient even when you're not playing the game. So this game was originally released on iOS devices, I believe, which you can kind of see in certain design choices in this game, um, especially the graphics. It, that part leaves a bit to be desired. Uh, it feels more like a game that you might have seen maybe 10 years ago, but outdated graphics aside, I can absolutely see this being used in an educational environment, which makes me very happy. So you have uh, three different biomes to choose from from the start. You have your desert biome, the rainforest biome, and the grassland biome, which all come with their specific uh, creatures, animals, and plants. So we're going to go ahead and start with the grassland biome. Okay guys, so here we are. This is our brand new biome here, and this little creature is called the Owlbot. He's what we use to zip around our little world here. And uh, of course we get to name our biome too, so let's see, we'll just name it uh, the Grasslands. There we go. <laughs> Something very simple. So you use the right click on your mouse to change the uh, camera so you can look around everywhere. This is a very <laughs> strange looking place, our little biome. You use the W, A, S, and D keys on your keyboard to actually uh, move around and you can use the shift key to kind of sprint, go really quickly, zooming around the place if you need to get somewhere fast, I guess. But uh, this place is very, very empty right now. So how do we fill it? We uh, just click right down here on this blue little leaf and then we have uh, three tabs to choose from. And the first one, which is uh, probably one of the most important, is the consumer tab. Consumers are um, our herbivores, they're our carnivores, they're all sorts of different creatures that will populate our new biome here. And because we're in the grasslands, we can um, choose between things like jackrabbits and foxes and prairie dogs, all sorts of things that you would actually find in a typical grasslands environment. So first we're gonna choose an herbivore. We'll choose the jackrabbit. And if we scroll all the way out here, we can go into strategic mode to uh, figure out exactly where we wanna place him. So I think maybe somewhere over here would be a good spot. We'll place him right there. So now we have our first consumer in our biome. We have our jackrabbit. And uh, he is going to get very hungry very, very fast if we let him stay like this because he has nothing to eat at this point. So we need to go into our second tab, which is our producer tab. And this is full of all sorts of different plants that uh, herbivores would probably like to eat. So we can even uh, unlock trees later on, but right now I just have access to um, these couple of things. I've unlocked a few things as I have uh, played on my own. So we can uh, put some grass down for our jackrabbit to eat. Let's put some grass right there, put some more right there, give him plenty of grass to uh, munch on as the days pass by. And uh, there we go. If we zoom in now, we'll get out of strategic mode and we will take a look at our little sleeping bunnies. Aren't they adorable? If you zoom all the way in, actually, something uh, a little bit different, you can enter the camera mode. So we could uh, take a picture of our snoozing rabbits if we wanted to. Right there, how cute is that? He's kicking his little feet. And then uh, it will be saved to our computer so we can look back at that whenever we want to. So that's very neat. And then we just zoom back out, we scroll out again to get out of camera mode and we are back to our little owl bot. So that's very good indeed. So we have our jackrabbits, but the problem is even though uh, they can eat and all, they will easily take over our land if we don't have some sort of balance in here. We need a predator to help control their population. So let's get back into our bird's eye view and let's uh, choose a predator for our jackrabbits to, uh, to deal with. Let's see, how about a bobcat? Let's put a bobcat way over here. Now all these lines across the screen show where their territory will be. So we want to make sure that the white lines are crossing over the uh, the jackrabbits so we know that they will interact and of course the bobcats have a very very large territory So we have nothing to worry about we can put them right here It shows that he will interact with the jackrabbits and then we can place them So now uh, the bobcat will have the jackrabbits to eat 
The jackrabbits have, of course, all of this yummy grass to munch on, but they also won't get out of hand because they will be under check, you could say, by the uh, bobcats that we just placed. But that leaves us with the last tab over here. These are our decomposers. The decomposers take care of all the waste that our consumers leave behind as they go about their normal day. Different bones and, uh, you know, <laughs> all the icky stuff. If we leave that waste out in our biome, then we will have a very unhealthy biome for our creatures to live in. And the health points up here will go down very, very quickly. So let's take some mushrooms and let's uh, just place them around our biome here and there so we have uh, nothing to worry about some over here and uh maybe i'll nope okay our energy is actually too low to place another one this energy will tick up steadily as you're playing though you just have to wait a little while for it to fill up again because the mushrooms cost 20 energy to place so that's pretty good that's good for now and uh we can see if we click on our jackrabbits that their hunger is at 87% right now. Oh, it's actually going down. So maybe we want to put some more plants out for them. It looks like that wasn't enough. So we will do that in just a moment. And this, um, I am going to butcher this word so bad. I think it's a detritus or something. This is our, this is their waste, basically. This is the waste that they're generating. It's only at level one right now. So it's nothing to worry about. And the mushrooms will help take care of it just in case it gets a little bit higher. And uh, here's their average health as well. So if anything uh, gets too low, then their health will drop and that will affect our overall biodome health points. So let's look into getting them a little bit more to eat. Some producers, more producers for our little bunny friends. Let's give them some, uh, this is milk vetch. Nice place. Uh, that looks like something they could hide in nicely as well, just in case the bobcats decide to pay a visit. And hopefully that will help their uh, overall hunger go up a little bit more. So there we go. We have uh, little jackrabbits and we also have uh, these bobcats. But of course, there are many, many more creatures that you can unlock throughout the game than that. Right here, we're just looking at the grassland creatures. But if you were playing the desert biome, then you would have different animals to look at and unlock as well. So if we wanted to unlock this garter snake, then we would be using our Taito coins. Right up here, we have uh, 13 Taito coins right now, and uh, it costs 10 Taito coins to unlock the garter snake. So why don't we do that? We'll just click yes here, and now we can use the garter snake. This is a carnivore, and he's an extra small animal. Let's see, where can we place our new little garter snake? How about right here? Here we go. So he can interact with all of these different creatures and we can see what sort of impact that leaves on our biodome. Now, if we want to learn more about our little snake friend, then we can click down on this red button here and we can uh, find him in this expansive list of every single item and animal and <laughs> all sorts of things in the game. We just have to... Uh, find our garter snake there he is and then we could read about his diet his predators his habitat what he likes and how long he lives all sorts of things this game is just full of information it could absolutely be used in a uh, school setting which is just amazing the developers really took their time making sure that it was uh, very fun and uh, <laughs> educational at the same time okay so after purchasing that garter snake we are very low on Taito coins so how do we get more Taito coins the first way is uh, just by unlocking achievements in the game. You'll slowly build up your title coins by uh, unlocking different achievements. The other way to collect title coins is just by letting the days pass, just by building a uh, proper balanced biodome that allows all of your creatures to thrive and live happily. So every week after seven days pass, you will get kind of an allowance of sorts. Um, they give you title coins based on things like your animal diversity and also your biodome health points. And we're at 98% right now, so we could be doing a little bit better. We could definitely be doing a little bit better. We'll take a look around here, see if there's anything that we can fix. It looks like um, the bunnies are just a little bit hungry, so maybe that's the problem. But after seven days pass, we will get um, some more title coins to spend on different items to help uh, give them a little bit more to roam around in, and us as well, because it's very bare over here. <laughs> we just have one lone little bobcat spending his time sleeping on the hill. But um, if you would like the days to pass faster, you can go up to the right-hand corner here and click this fast forward button. 
And I know it doesn't look like much is going on right now. The animals are still moving at the exact same speed as they were before, but it is definitely making the uh, days progress a little bit faster. You can see it's getting dark already. So it's kind of like it, it makes the daylight cycles uh, speed up a bit. Not the animals, but just the cycles themselves. If that doesn't work out for you though, if you would like things to move a little bit differently, you can go into the options instead and take a look at this max time away area. Basically what this means is when you turn off your game, you can allow your biodome to continue moving without you. So you can set it to allow only one week to pass while you're gone, which is easy mode, or maybe medium mode for one month, or hard mode, which allows three months to pass while you're gone which uh, could either help or hurt you. If you don't have a very balanced biome, then you will come back to complete chaos, <laughs> most likely. But if you do have a very balanced biome, then you'll just get a lot of title coins, which is very good, very good indeed. So that about covers the basics of this game. This is just a quick little video to give you an idea of uh, what you could do if you decided to buy this game and try it for your own. Um, if you would like to see more of this series, just let me know and I will do my best to make that happen. We could visit the other biomes as well. We could see what we could get up to in the desert or the rainforest, or we could come back to the grasslands too and uh, try to make a thriving biome for all these little bunnies and bobcats <laughs> and all the other animals in here too. We could unlock the rest of these as well. There's plenty of different animals to see. Frogs and honeybees and deer mice. There's a, a badger and a gray wolf too. Oh, he looks very majestic. <laughs> so it would be very interesting to see how all of these animals interact. Oh, that guy's going after the bunny, it looks like. Or maybe not. <laughs> he has different plans. He's off on his own. So yeah, this game, it's its a very charming little game. I can absolutely see it being used in um, a school setting. And honestly, it's just so much fun to throw all of these different creatures together and see how they work. And you don't have to just make a balanced biome if you don't want to. You could just throw a whole family of jackrabbits all around the place. You could fill it with bobcats. You could do whatever you want to. It probably won't last very long <laughs> because it certainly won't be balanced, but it would be interesting as a, an experiment just to see what happens. But for now, uh, I think that's about it. And I will see you next time. Bye.